long time coming, but it finally came that the world will soon know my name. And all of my problems and hard times almost drove me insane. But still, I had to try to maintain. maintain. I couldn't believe that it had come to this. I'm losing everything that I worked so hard to achieve. I wish I could go back and start all over again. It all started back in Port Arthur, Texas, where I grew up a poor kid. The mother, who was an albino, meaning her skin tone looked like a Caucasian lady, and a father who was an alcoholic. I always felt like I was different, like I was different from the other kids, like those differences made me stand out. I found peace in the sport of baseball. I stayed with baseball because it was a peaceful place. I didn't have to worry about finances and working and finding odd jobs to do. I just played baseball. I stuck with baseball until I was in high school. That's where a sport that I had grown so fond of had scarred me for life. When I found out that my baseball umpire, who I had known from Little League, was actually my biological father, this devastated me. I went 17 years of my life not knowing who my true biological father was. Even after my parents had divorced years ago, I still had no idea. I was scarred. I took that anger into the military where my focus was on work, always hard working, always, always trying to do better to reverse the financial hardships I had as a kid. I married my high school sweetheart, had my first child, bought my first house. In the Air Force, I won all the awards because I was the hardest working person. That hard work led to me getting a very high paying job as a semiconductor technician when I got out of the Air Force after my four year enlistment. It seemed like I had finally achieved this high level of financial freedom. I even tried to diversify by getting into real estate, which is what everyone told me I should be doing. And even though a couple of the deals seemed shady, I thought at the time, if it makes money, it makes sense. And there you have it. I became everyone's hero because I had all the things that they wanted. I was on track to an early retirement. And just when it seemed like I had made it, just when it seemed like my problems were all behind me, tragedy struck. The events of 9-11 were tragic and many people lost their lives. It was a horrible, horrible tragedy for our country and for many lives. Myself being one of the people who had all my money tied into tech stocks, felt the wrath of the huge stock market crash that followed the tragedy. I couldn't believe what was happening to me. I couldn't believe that after all this time I was losing what I had worked so hard to achieve. I knew deep inside what was happening, but I wasn't ready to face it. So then, at that moment, after all I had been through, all the things that I had achieved and accomplished in life, I'm facing foreclosure, repossession, bankruptcy, having to start all over with nothing and realize that I was right back where I had started all by myself no one around and at that very moment I had my moment of enlightenment that moment in life when you realize that everything wasn't what it seemed 
After all the time I had spent trying to acquire things and make life better for myself and the people directly around me, I had never tapped into the power inside of me. I had never tapped into my own talents. I had never once thought about what my purpose was here on this earth. My first guest is Marcus A. Parker. Hello. How you doing? How are you? Real good. Real good, good. good. Real Finally good. get you on the show here. I got up off of that floor and began to get busy. I realized that for all I had accomplished, I would never used the talent to show others how to get through the things that I had been through. To show other young people who grew up in my situation how they could become better, how they could become stronger, how they could accomplish their own dreams in their lives. And I did it. I wrote a book that became a Dallas Morning News bestseller called The Product. I even started making my own version of rap music, which I called motivational rap. And believe it or not, even though everybody laughed at first, schools, teachers, they started loving it. I even started getting recognition from local DJs who definitely liked the fact that I was making positive music and that the kids were loving it. Yeah, what up? It's DJ Big Bank. You know, I hold it down for the beat here in Dallas. I just want to show love to the big homie Marcus, man, for, for keeping the positivity in hip-hop. You know, it's a lot of stuff out there, man, but he continues to get his message across in a positive way. And that's big, man. I got to meet a few famous people like motivational speaker Les Brown and comedian Ricky Smiley. I even got a chance to perform at Bishop T.D. Jakes' church. The Potter's house. Join him. When it's all said and done, I just live to hear him say, Well done, my son. Uh, stay driven with the talents you were given. I love y'all. I finally made it. I finally felt so good about myself. I felt so good about the things I had accomplished and the people that I had helped and inspired and motivated with my music and books and speaking. But drama for me was far from over. In the years following, I lived through the death of my biological father, as well as the death of the father who raised me to a car accident. And to make matters worse, I was indicted by the FBI behind a mortgage scandal from the time that I spent working in real estate years ago before I ever wrote my book. It had taken me four and a half long years to establish myself as an author, a motivational rap artist, and a speaker, and now this. It seems as though my career was over. When it was time for the judge to sentence me, however, he took in consideration the fact that I admitted to my involvement and also the fact that I had left real estate because of it. Even knew that I had been spending the last four years rapping to teachers and students and parents across the country and instead of sending me to prison he actually gave me three years probation six months house arrest and another chance to do something positive in life and there I was once again had overcome and got past the negativity in my life so that I could go on and do some positive things you know when I reflect back on everything and look at it all, I have to go back to what one of my mentors told me. My mentor, Tunde Obazi, once told me, he said, Marcus, the hardest lessons in life go to the best students. Well, for the first time, I had really, really been proud of myself because I realized I passed my test. 
It's motivational rap. And if you never heard of it, you may think what the nerve of it is rap or just a curve of it. Lyrics you feel without the dirty spit. Hit a curve, your nervousness is probably your boy deserved a kid. Now let me rewind to page one. Back when motivational rapping had just begun. I was just a dude who lived through many hard times. Wrote it in a book, but they'd rather hear it through hard rhymes. Travels to schools, they telling me they love the way I flow, but can't figure out why they can't hear me on the radio. They say you own the something, but don't know what to call it. Inspirational lyrics to uplift you, Marcus, you all that. I took it in stride, cause it was like a joke. I cannot be so loved and still be broke. Barely getting by, but people say I'm so fly. Marcus, your music just so much better than the other guys. It started getting better. I booked a few gigs, some standing ovations, and my pockets filled up with ends. And wouldn't you know, before my progress could excite me, some bad decisions I made years ago came back to bite me. So now I'm in court telling the judge that I'm a good guy who straightened up his life. Can you let me off just this one time? I made some mistakes back in the day. I'm slanging money, but your honor, I realized I was behaving like a dummy. That's when I made a change and jumped back in my lane to encourage these youngsters not to get caught up in the game. So now I got probation with six months of house arrest. I have a million to pay back, and I promise I'll do my best. And that's just what I'm doing, actively pursuing my purpose. Never nervous, just looking forward to the day I can surface. Cause I don't need no more props, no sweet credit, no recognition. I'm dripping with ambition, with my focus locked on my mission. No time for no dissing, pointing fingers, or being petty. But I would love to be your favorite rapper if you would let me. Look, I got off track, but let's get back to the fact that I don't curse in my verses, and I pray that you got my back. Long as I stay in my lane, though I may never see fame. I'm cool if the masses never screaming my name. Long as I did my part to ignite a little spark in somebody who might possibly knock it about the park. Cause it ain't about me, it's about the person I can help to take it to the next level. That's the meaning of wealth. Thankful for the opportunity to be a blessing. Remember your hard times is really only a lesson. So I hope you like the story, how I learned to adapt. And please support your boy with this motivational rap.